Jesus is coming soon and this one mistake you and I, we don't want to make. Are we living in the end times? And is it possible that Jesus really returns in our generation? Some people say yes, some people think no. In fact, the Bible tells us that in the last days there will be scoffers saying, well, where is the promise of God's coming? We, don't, we certainly don't see it. Well, let me tell you something. In the book of 1 John chapter 2, verse 18, he says, Little children, it is the last hour, and as you have heard that the Antichrist is coming, even now many Antichrists have come, by which we know that it is the last hour. Certainly, the Apostle John believed that it is the last hour 2,000 years ago. But you got to remember one thing that with God, one day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years is like one day. But whether God's going to come back in our lifetime or not, there's one thing that we have to make sure that we do not do. In Matthew chapter 24, verse 45, Jesus says, Who then is a faithful and wise servant, whom his master made ruler over his household to give them food in due season? Blessed is that servant whom his master, when he comes, will find so doing. Assuredly, I say to you that he will make him ruler over all his goods. But if that evil servant says in his heart, My master is delaying his coming and begins to beat his fellow servants and to eat and to drink with the drunkards, the master of that servant will come on a day when he is not looking for him and at an hour that he is not aware of and will cut him in two and appoint him his portion with the hypocrites. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. That is a very solemn warning because the weeping and gnashing of teeth certainly doesn't sound like heaven. It is easy to look at this scripture and say, well, Jesus is talking about the drunkards, those who are not looking forward for his coming. Well, I am. I'm expecting Jesus to come back in my lifetime, so I'm safe. But if we look closely in verse 46, it says, blessed is that servant whom his master, when he comes, will find so doing. What is he doing? Obviously, if you're a servant, you're trying to do the will of the master. Sometimes it is easy for us to think, oh, well, I'm getting on that bus of, of the rapture. I'm looking for for the coming of Jesus. So all these people that are not living right with God, well, literally to hell with them because they are going to hell. Well, is that the attitude really for those of us who are following Jesus to have? Or maybe your attitude is not as extreme saying, well, let's just let the world burn. But we could get into that space where we feel like, you know what, as long as I'm taken care of, as long as my family is okay, then, well, it doesn't really matter what the world goes through. This is the hour when the world is in chaos, is in crisis. This is a time for us not to get on the bus and sit there when Jesus hasn't come back yet. The driver is not in the seat yet. When he comes, we want to be there. We want to be on that bus. But Jesus says that those who will get on that bus, quote unquote, will be those who the master when he comes will find so doing. So the question for you and I today is what has God given you and me in our lives to do? You know, if Christianity is just all about getting saved and then we just go to heaven, there's no point for us to stay here after we got saved. We have a mission to do. Jesus told us in Matthew chapter 28, we are to go and to preach the gospel to all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son, the Holy Spirit, and He will be with us until the end of the age. Right now, we're sitting on such a golden opportunity. The opportunity to win souls, the opportunity to bring people who feel like they're angry at God or they've been hurt by religion. This is the time that we can show them the good news. This is the only time that we can do it in the dispensation of grace. When Jesus still hasn't come back yet, we want to be faithful in doing what he calls us to do. Certainly, there is a general will that God says that we want. he wants us to believe in him. He wants us to obey him and to love him and to love others. That's a general will. But there's also a specific will that God has called you and and my life to walk out. Every one of us have books written in heaven before we were born that we we're supposed to fulfill. You know, it doesn't take very long for you to figure out how many people today are hurt by religion and they're angry at God when there's really no reason for it to be because whether they've been hurt by certain Christians, certain groups, uh, legalism, today we can offer them that grace. We can show them, you know what? God is not mad at you. Certainly, He doesn't want us to be in sin, but it says that you tell them, for God so loved the world, that means you, that he gave his one and only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. We know that verse in the scripture in Sunday school. If you grew up in a church like me, we heard it so many times. But do you know how many people have not heard of that? Think about it this way. I got three kids. And if I find out that my eldest daughter, she somehow is taken care of. She's got her own lunch. She packed her own lunch and she got everything. And she's all taken care of. And I look at my younger kids and my son, my other daughter, they don't have anything, 
guess how I'm gonna feel about that situation when I go downstairs. I'm like, well, why aren't you taking care of your siblings? I can tell you, I'm not gonna be very pleased with that. Well, today, God is telling us a similar message. As Christians, we can't just sit here. We can't just go to church on Sunday or go to a group on Zoom or something and be like, well, you know what? I am taken care of. I am fed and I'm okay. There is a world that is dying out there. There are people who are hurt, people who don't know the gospel of Jesus Christ, and people who wants to go the extreme and serve Satan because they have been hurt by the church. Today, we can say no. We're going to bring those people back because those people are dearly loved by God. Hey, let me ask you something. What if when you were in the times when you were backslidden? I certainly remember the times when I, I was backslidden. I remember there's certain ministers, there's certain people who gave me grace in my life, gave me mercy in my life when I was in that state. If no one reached out to me during those situations, maybe I'm on that path not leading to a narrow path that leads to life. Maybe I'm on the path going to hell. I don't want to go there, but someone reached out to me. And someone is in need of you reaching out to them today. So I want to encourage you today, as we continue to wait for the coming of Jesus Christ, yes, He's coming soon. We say Maranatha, but we cannot just sit here. We cannot just say, He's coming soon. I know a lot of people do dates, they're like, okay, this date, this month, and they line up all these certain events. The Apostle John, 2,000 years ago, believed that the last hour is here. 2,000 years ago. Was he wrong? No, he wasn't. 2,000 years have passed, though. What does that mean? It means that today, Jesus can come tomorrow, the next week, one month later. Or he can also not come for another 2,000 years. And if he doesn't, if we come to the end of our lives and we realize, man, all my life I've been just sitting there, waiting for the rapture, waiting for the coming of Jesus, and yet I've done really nothing, I've just taken care of myself, wouldn't that be such a great regret? Now, I'm not saying that there's no grace from God. He will forgive us. He has grace for us. But now when we think about the warning that Jesus has given us, He loves us. But he also wants us to do that which pleases him. He wants us to honor him and love him in a way by obeying his commandments. So today I encourage you, reach out to those around you. Pray and seek the Holy Spirit and ask him who you can touch, who you can give, who you can minister time and, and your resources to, to bless them in the name of Jesus. Because everything that you do, even a cup of water that you give to someone in the name of the Lord, Jesus says, your reward will not be forgotten. So right now, Heavenly Father, I thank you. I pray in Jesus' name. I thank you for all the times that you have given us grace. You have given us mercy. I pray that right now you use us to stand that hand. Extend the hand of mercy and grace to those who are around us, God. We know that the hour of your coming is soon. And as we wait, I pray that you help us to minister life and grace to those who are around us. May we not sit idle. May we not sit only looking at ourselves being taken care of, but we also look at the world whom you love, your church whom you love, and may we give encouragement, and may we give life to those who are around us, God. We thank you, and we praise you for always being with us and never leaving or forsaking us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.